welcome to Face the Facts. It's good to have everybody here once again. Happy summer to those of you that have not joined us recently. This is our first show in a little bit of time. We had a very crazy month of June. We are now fully into the month of July, which means baseball is in full swing. And we're actually going to throw that curveball at you to start this program. Because it's amazing that dating back to, you know, April 1st of this year, you know, the Red Sox lost their first three games of the season. And a lot of people, I myself included, wanted to jump off the Tobin Bridge and say, this is, here we go again. Another sucky season. Here it comes. You can't enjoy baseball again. And poof, they are the best team in baseball, your Boston Red Sox. And it's really a breath of fresh air. It's very exciting. I love this team. I really love this team. They have this underdog mentality. They have this comeback kid mentality. They have this unsung hero approach. I mean, all these guys that are producing for the most part right now are doing an exceptional job. There is so little to complain about. So it's really they're coming up roses on this whole entire team. And I want to talk about it because I don't think they get enough credit where credit is, credit is deserved right now. And they have so much likability to them. You know, last year with the COVID short season, it was a mess. There was no Alex Cora. He was suspended. They had Ron Renicky as their manager. It was a disaster from the get-go. A lot of players didn't even want to play. J.D. Martinez having a horrible season. Uh, it was really a, a relevant season. This year, if you are not watching appointment television, I mean, they're on the West Coast right now, and I even want to stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning and watch this team. That's how, that's how confident and good I feel about everything going on with this team. So, Tom, I don't know if you've seen, heard, know anything going on with these Red Sox, but I think it's appropriate that we talk about them. Oh, I absolutely agree. I um, Obviously, you know, with the whole situation with YouTube TV, it's very uh, rare that I get a chance to watch the Red Sox games. But um, I did Fubo. go. I, I was Fubo. at the – You need Fubo TV. It's great. Oh, I know. I did get to watch the uh, Yankees game, though. I was at, I was at the game uh, a couple weekends ago. So I was able to see that. So that was pretty cool. Um, they are a disgrace. The Yankees? And it's I mean, I'm I love every ounce of it. I'm, I'm surprised they're still even kind of – I mean, they're not as in it as they could be or as they could be. And a half be, games out the AL East. It's they're awesome. still – Pound it on. Keep going. I mean, it's hilarious. They can't get it together. One, one, the, either the pitching will do good, or and then the hitting won't do good, or it's Aaron the Boone is the gift that keeps on giving. Keep him there. Keep him there. We love him. We love Aaron Boone here in Boston. He is an absolute dweeb. That's a new word for me. He's a dweeb as the manager of the Yankees. We'll call this episode the dweeb. That is that is Aaron Boone. These guys are savages. These guys are awesome. Oh, they're wonderful. I'm going to throw a roll this Chapman in there every single night. Well, you just keep on doing that, pal, because last place is totally in your division coming to you. So it's, I was, uh, my, my uncle's a Yankee fan. He's from uh, the Tampa. Mine too. So I just land basted him on, uh, on the fourth. I go, happy fourth. Love you, Yankees too. <laughs> well it's it's uh yeah i mean my uncle was starting to talk trash to me when the red sox were losing three games i was like it's it's a long season mm. the season's That's not good. even over I yet thank you man you know i don't want to you know i this this grin won't get off my face from it but if you're a yankee fan oh boy i'm sorry for you people i am so sorry your are you though is, uh your team is just an absolute embarrassing stock they were, I think I think I feel I think this team is actually worse because you kind of expect Baltimore to just suck, you know. But the Yankees expected to be better than the Red Sox, expected to be championship caliber, and they've fallen in their face. And one of the best parts about this whole thing is this whole sticky thing. We've talked about the whole stickum stuff with the baseball and everything. Red Sox have the best pitching staff since this whole thing came down. The Red Sox have the best bullpen. 
they have the best across the board. You know, take out Garrett Richards on a couple poor starts, and they they have an under three ERA as a starting pitching staff without the sticky stuff. So I give them a lot of credit with the adjustment. Um, but Garrett Cole, oh my God, they owe him three hundred falling apart mil over twelve <laughs> years, and he can't even pitch to save his life without the stuff. <laughs> it is hysterical. I feel bad, but it's just like, hey, they get what they paid for, I guess. These spoiled, rotten little brats can't throw a freaking baseball without their little sticky stuff. How much of a goon do you look like, my? Well, the Yankees are the Yankees are finally seeing what Garrett Cole is all about. I mean, this is who he is. Seeing on the hook for that for that long. Is it every Garrett? Is it every Garrett who's kind of falling apart after they took away Garrett, Garrett, Garrett Richard? Garrett. I mean, yeah. Well, it's, Garrett. I mean, that's why that's why Pittsburgh didn't resign him. Yeah. It's because he was doing terrible. Yeah, you know they don't have, only have to deal with you know Garrett Cole with all their stuff, but they got to deal with even Jim Carlos Stanton. I mean that that oh, dude, right. that that dude isn't going to make it till he's <laughs> thirty one. I mean, yeah, what has he done? I don't even. I haven't heard his name. Yeah, I haven't heard he his name. He stands up at the plate, them. stiff as all hell. It looks like the yeah. Statue of Liberty when he swings up there. I mean, he uh, he skirt. struck out. He struck out every out the game I was at. Oh, wow. would you? What day did he go? Sunday or? I was at the Saturday game. Saturday, uh, yeah. It's a big. A lot of our staff, a lot of even uh, Gabe was at. A lot of people were at the Yankee series at some point. And everything. I uh, I watched finally a full game that Sunday game, and it was it was a good one to watch. I was amazed how they got to Garrett Cole in the first inning. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> I guess. I guess not. I guess not. It's not. It's just not. So. I don't want to. I mean, we've given the Yankees a lot of you know crap to start here. Let's let's talk about the positivity here. I mean, the Red Sox. Where do you, let's start with the lineup here first. I mean, the, the leadoff spot's been a problem. I'm not going to say that you know if we want to identify some things that are still a little bit shaky. It's definitely the fact that there isn't a solidified leadoff hitter. I mean, Kiki's been better in the past two weeks, which is great because they need a jump start at the beginning of that lineup. No question about it. I mean, Verdugo has been pretty consistent. J.D. Martinez is having a phenomenal year. All-star. Forgot to mention that. All-star. you got Xander Bogarts starting all-star. Rafi Devers is just... Ever since the adjustment with the fastball and the curveball, I lo- have you guys seen his new approaches up at the plate? I absolutely love it. He's talking to himself every single time he's up to the plate. Come on, hit that effing ball. Come on, here it comes. Come on, lock it in. Lock- you can hear him like exactly saying like come on Raffy like he's 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 it, it's hysterical and I can't I can't even really kind of describe it but hey he whatever is, works man whatever he is works so rocked in I would not want to be that opposing pitcher because it looks like he's going to take that ball and just hit it right off the pitcher's head and the head's gonna come off like a total decapitation so he's been outstanding his defense has significantly he's- improved um, he's an all-star. And he's getting better in the field, baseman. too. He keeps getting better in the field, too. Yes, he is. Defensively. I know I give Hunter Renifro enough credit. What a breath of fresh air that signing was. Bargain basement there. What a cannon of an arm he's got in the outfield. The Red Sox lead the league in assists. I don't know if you guys knew about did that. You, did you see that catch he made, the catch and slide he made? I don't know if it was that same Yankees game, but it was like a like a week or a week ago. I think he caught it like in center field. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. big fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, They had they had three they had three great uh, outs at home. They had Renfro's, they had Hernandez, and uh, Martinez all through runners out. Um, They also had. uh, uh, We also have the return of Christian Arroyo, who returned from the disabled list last night, hit a big home run in the game against the Angels. So he's going to be probably locked in more at second base. I see, Kiki, I see Kiki fully being your center fielder, which I'm happy about because the guy's just got a cannon of an arm. Two assists in the in the athletic series. First base is still an issue. You know, you got Bobby Dahlbeck, who is just – he's got to make that adjustment. It's got to be consistent. So if the Red Sox are in the market – He's a beast, a roster, though. He's I would huge. say finding somebody first base-wise that can help your team would probably be a need that I would look to upgrade. I just don't think Bobby Dahlbeck is going to, it's going to make that stride to be a full-time major leaguer. He's more platoon. I know uh, I say this all the time, but all I can think about is Brian Dahlbeck. 
Every I time. Think the same thing. <laughs> same thing. Really? Yeah. Java. Just... Yep. I don't know. So yeah, I, but... I, hope, I hope for the best on that front. I hope he makes that adjustment. And I want to see Christian Bat. Christian Vasquez had a very bad first half so far. He's got to be better. He does lead the team amazingly in stolen bases, which is shocking in its own right. Catcher leading the team. So if you want to improve on that, I want to see some improvement with Vasquez. Base running, I want to see a little bit better. You know, outside of Vasquez, they really can't steal bases. And I think that that's going to be a telltale sign to be a true championship caliber team. And I want to improve the bench a little bit. You've got a lot of versatility. I'm not a big fan of Danny Santana. I think the big move I would make to the lineup is I would uh, get Jared Duran, who's up, who's in Worcester, who's hitting the cover off the ball. It's an up-and-coming prospect. I want to see what he can do. I think that he should be really looked at as your center fielder. If you got to move Kiki to even first base or Arroyo to first base, put Kiki at second, I'd do that. I think that could be an option to improve your team. But that's the offense front and defense for the most part. Pitching what do you, what do you think of uh, – what, what are your thoughts on Connor Wong? You can't be wrong with him. No, I think I think he's just there as a placeholder. I think he's a very good defensive catcher. But Pilecki is going to be back from the DL, I think, in the next week, if not at the end of this second half, you know, to, to get back in. So I don't, I don't well, see him there long. He's quick. He's, a speed, quick. he's speedy for a catcher. He's very quick. So I think that that would be uh, that would be a nice addition if they have the speed there to put to put that you know into play, which is great. Um, I got to see his first major league hit. That's the second time. Yeah, a seen nice hit the right field on the approach that he used in that game. So that was. Good. I saw um, his, and then I saw Zuway Lins a few years ago. Cool. Could give. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what happened? And he went back to China. Starting pitching in the bullpen. This bullpen I want to talk about first. This bullpen is absolutely electric. Electric. Outside of Matt Andres, who I want to ship to the next planet, I got full faith in the rest of the crew. I got full faith. I think everybody else, Ottavino has been awesome. Imagine being the Yankees and trading Ottavino and Whitlock. Oh, oh, could they use them right now? Oh, what an embarrassment. You know, is just locked in that eighth inning role. Matt Barnes, you're another all your favorite. Your favorite. Appearance. I mean, yeah. come on, <laughs> come on. Like all star Nate Avaldi, all star. avaldi has been pitching great. Pavetta, he's pitching tonight against Otani. That is big time yeah. appointment television this evening. Otani is going to be pitching. You got uh, your ace, basically Avaldi. You know, throwing. I think he's eight and three with a very low three ERA. He's like he's like nine and two. He's something ridiculous, right? He's got nine wins, I think. He's got like nine yeah. wins. He pitched the game that I went to. He yeah, started great. That game. yeah he's, no, been going, he's gone. He's gone seven innings his last two starts. That's fantastic. And, that's and you're gonna get you're gonna get Chris Sale soon. I was just gonna say Sale is on his way to. I think he's going to Worcester in the next week to do his rehab. He's got another yeah, batting he's practice. He's doing, doing simulated. He was oh, right. the best yeah, trade, uh, trade deadline acquisition right there. You don't even have to do anything. Just activate Chris Sale. Wonderful. I love it. Same with Duran. You don't have to trade. Get someone him. that can steal bases, though, you know? So are you a believer in this team? That was my next question here. Oh, do I've you been, believe in miracles? I've, I've been a believer Al in this Michael? team. I've been, I've been a believer in this team since Cora was named the manager again. So can this team go the distance? Like in um, Mercury? If we can get past Houston, if we can find a way to beat Houston, because I feel like that's the only team we haven't really beat yet. You had a great series against the A's. I forgot to mention that. That A's series. Yeah. Two out of three. They one to nothing. Swept. You really should have swept that last game, which was set, uh, the uh, second game, rather, went 12 innings. And, you know, you didn't have anybody else in your bullpen. You had Matt ship him to the next planet, Andres, who was the last man standing. And, you know, it, it is what it is at that point. So, I just, I, I love this team. I, I, even a little bit, maybe more than 2018. I just, they just got this, they got this thing in them. I think they're more talented than 2013. I think this underdog mentality is, tr is tremendous. And I think, I think this team's going to be a real stud as we progress here into the rest of the season. Even if the Red Sox go 500 the rest of the time, you know, from this point on until, you know, the end of the season, they still win 93 games. 
That's crazy. This team, is, this team is projected to win 105 games right now. Wow. Well, just think about this. Like, you broke up your, your big three, your outfield, that you yeah. thought was the future for, like, who knows how long. And you've now assembled something comparable uh, comparable to it. And it's crazy. I never thought it was going to be this quick to get back into, you know, relevance. You know, they're getting great stuff from Verdugo. Center field, you know, you kind of been hit or miss on that kind of stuff. But the Ren- Renfro has really – Renfro has been a better player than Mookie Betts this year, guys. Been a better player than Mookie freaking Betts. And it, it's showing the rest of the league here, and this is the crazy part, these high-priced, spoiled brats who want to demand 300-something million dollars over time, which is great for all of us because it's not going to happen anymore. They're going to go bargain shopping. That's kind of what Kyle Bloom did. He went – Bargain shopping, basically, and found guys that fit the character and fit this team's roster, assembled it perfectly. That's the model. It's not throwing Garrett Cole or Mookie Betts absurd money at certain things. It it's money do any good. Look at look at um look at Francisco Lindor on the Mets. What a joke. He's not worth 325. He's just not. Mookie Betts is not worth 12 years, 375. He's not worth it. So I think this is a good thing that we're seeing this because I think it changes baseball and it brings things back down to earth here a little bit. So it's it's money ball. This is a money ball approach that the Sox are using. It is. It's not like the high on base. They don't have a lot of walks. They have a lot more grit to them. They have a lot more. They're back against the wall kind of mentality, a little bit like the Bruins had from this season a little bit. I think this team, though, altogether is a better team than what the Bruins roster had. I do. This team can go far. You know, the Bruins had the pieces to do it, but they failed. You know, when the going got tough, they, they, they just kind of, you know, sat back and didn't rise above to what they, uh, the point we wanted to. So we finish off. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday against the Angels. So far, it's the Red Sox have won one of those games. They play Otani tonight with the Angels. They'll be on the hill. They'll have a Wednesday afternoon game. Then they'll have a travel day back to Fenway. Well, they'll be taking on the Phillies this weekend, which will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I, I, not to be greedy, but you can win all those games. Maybe if you lose one. But I think they have the chance to really do some damage here and everything, too. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is the impact that this has had at Fenway Park with the, with the return of fans. Ever since the return of fans to Fenway Park, the Red Sox have the best home field advantage with their fans back at the park. It was, it was loud at the game I was at. It was loud. I mean, I know it was a Red Sox game. Fenway. They have missed their team. But finally have it back. Man, I haven't heard it that loud, and I can't tell you how long. That's why I'm really disappointed with the Bruins. You know, you had such a, it's such an advantage with being the first team back after a year and a half out, basically. And that's what you do. Yeah. I'm not over what? the Bruins yet. I will be totally honest with you. I'm not watching the Stanley Cup. Tom, sorry to, sorry to I talk give numbers. I'm about to to the yeah. Lightning and Montreal. So I want to transition into that next. Then we're going to go to Phil and that. Buddy. I just wanted no. to I wanted to ask Tom how much oh, are we, tickets. I'm sorry, are tickets cheaper now or are they more expensive? I I don't. I, they were a birthday present, so I have no. Oh, idea. okay. All right, fair um, enough. Do you know Nick I at think, all? I, really I think they wondered. are a little more expensive. Oh, I see. It would be great if they were cheaper and they're like, hey, you know what? Everyone come to a game because who wouldn't? You know what I mean? I know they have yeah. to recoup, but I know. think I think after this season, though, they'll go back down to regular price, probably. Yeah. All right, good enough. Sorry, Nick, I just wanted to... Oh, that's fine. No, I just wanted to keep everything so we can cover all of our, our, our ends here with all these teams. I just wanted to mention this, this, this whole Stanley Cup Finals thing. With I, I Tom, I can't root for either team. I can't. I had a person um, in the store today and say, who are you rooting for, Montreal or Tampa? And I said, neither. I can give, I can give two. I don't really... I mean, I don't, I don't care who wins, but... I mean, I'd rather Tampa win over Montreal because Canada can go another year without the cup. <laughs> yeah, they haven't won it. Have, I don't think Canada's won anything since '93. It's been a while. It's yeah, been like twenty while. something Loser years. Bill. Um, here's the thing. Here's the reason why I feel the same way. 
Okay, Tampa, we all know the story with them. I think they completely corrupted how they did the whole thing with the salary cap. I think it wasn't done right. I don't think they should be in the position that they are. Montreal should not be in the Western Conference. So pick and choose your battle here, folks. You, you just can't. And plus the fact, no, I kinda... really on the Tampa, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, come on, dude. You couldn't even go to be a banner captain for 2019 for game seven, and you can show up to there. I'm all, I'm all sad. I'm all sad. Disgusted. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I kind of like yeah. that. I kind of like that Canada has its own division now. It kind of makes it more competitive. No, I know COVID did it, but I, I think I'm pretty sure there was like a poll or something that like the players association and the players like voted that they liked how the playoffs set up was set up, but they didn't like how the divisions were made. Um, I kind of like that, but at, then again, it's like, well, you have three Canadian teams in the West, three Canadians in the East. What do you, you know? Are you gonna? What conference are you gonna put the division in? So that kind of makes it tough. But um, it get, I mean, it gives Canada more of a chance to have a team make it to the finals than any other any other uh, oh, way it's set up. But I mean, I'm not surprised that Montreal won Game Four. Um, wouldn't have been surprised if Tampa swept. I mean, I think Tampa's going to win anyway. It's going back to Tampa. I think Tampa's going to win it in game five because it's going back to Tampa. But, I mean, who knows? The Kings were, you know, were like the Canadians this year. And they went back in 2013. They were down 3-0 and came back and won the Cup. So, you never know. But I think Tampa's going to win. Last thing I want to mention on the hockey front, uh, the Bruins lost two additions to their or two people from their coaching staff. I'm not sure if you knew about this, Tom. Jay Pandolfo has now taken a job at BU to be their associate head coach. And Jay Leach, who was the coach of Providence, he is now going to be the coach of the Seattle Kraken. So two parts of the Bruins staff. See you later. They're out of here. Speaking of the Kraken, uh, July 16th is the expansion draft for them. And that should hopefully be the day that Jacob DeBrus can finally be the hell out of here. We hope. We hope. Bye. No. Um, Phil, basketball. I'll go to you. i ask you here. Well, first off, I'm glad the Canadians got a game in. Let's be real there. <laughs> Tom just gave me the, what's that? Say what? Say what? Look, uh, yeah, I don't care. I don't have any ancient hatred there. But basketball, let's get to that. I'm very happy with the new hiring for the Celtics. I'm very happy with the head coach. 100%. You know, you? Good. Yeah, of course. He's from a pop. He's from the pop tree. He's dealt with a lot of uh, superstars at Brooklyn. Yep. Yeah. And it seems like Tatum and Brown like this guy. We're still mentioning the guy. Can you re- can you remind our audience his name? Because I have a hard time pronouncing his first name. It's a Doka, right? Oh yeah, Doka. Uh, I actually forget it. I'll be honest. I forget it right now too. But we can now <laughs> pretend we can't walk away. Well, no. I mean, it's you know, I I don't know. Uh, let me get I it right now. Doka. Give me a Doka, something like that. A Doka Ome, I believe. Do, it's something like that. Yeah, I think um, it is. I think it is. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ume Adoka. Ume. It, uh, Ume. I, believe, Ume. I, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize. But he's married to Nia Long as well, which is kind of impressive. Oh, well, that's more for me to enjoy now. So I can. There like you it. go. Uh, there'll probably be a Nia Long sighting in the Boston area. We'll see. Oh, lovely. Uh, but yeah, be careful if you engage on Twitter. Uh, Tom, you Tom, have... Tom will totally understand my joke when I say this, that, oh, great. Now I have more late night emails to get back to now. Tom will pick up on that joke. From oh, sure. is, it a, is it a Twitter a one or no? Else. Else. <laughs> That's always great TV, Nick. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you, know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, oh, but Tom, I, our well, I, we're talking about subpoenas, but. <laughs> We don't uh, need any of those this summer. No. That would not be good. So no, but I, I I like the hire too. I think it's a good hire, and I actually I like the uh, Al Horford move, and I also like uh, them getting uh, the other big who gave us a lot of trouble uh, when we played OKC. Um, no, let me get that guy. But he uh, Celtics uh, the trade with um, OKC to get Al. Let Horford me tell you, this like, is great analysis. I, I love this. This I'm, I'm really <laughs> learning a lot here. <laughs> All right, th- fine. Sounds good. Jesus. Uh, no, actually, they sent because they got rid of Campbell Walker and they had to average give up that first back, round. Tom. Woo! Now, and Moses Brown is the center who's 
very uh very athletic he's like seven two i believe he's you so you have some depth there you have uh you know um oh my god my i'm brain fogging now but you have uh time lord one of my favorites and uh moses brown as a one-two punch and who knows who else they can bring in uh and you also have a, a couple other people from the chicago trade last year that got evan fournier over here but I, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of a splash they make. When's free agency? Uh, July. I think it begins. Uh, I forget exactly. Well, I think I a little bit after free. the finals. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I think a little after something, the finals. Something so, around there. Like July I, tell you, I think the South is going to be very active. That's uh, they all might. I, Damian Lillard wants out of the. Yeah, I've Portland. heard that. Bradley Beal's name, I've heard a lot. That he's I would still be, in too. I would be pretty shocked if Tatum and Brown were broken up after how much they plugged those two in particular. I think Marcus they might. Smart. He might be, and they might even break up Brown and Tatum. Who knows? But I, I'm interested to see what they do and how they do it. I mean, I wanted to, I was excited to come on here and talk about, of all people, Jay Crowder. Yeah. Because he's a guy, he's a Celtics guy who's was with them for every time they made it to the except minus last year who he was on the other team he was on the heat but he was on uh the two out of the three trips to the nba eastern conference finals with them well, of course i bring him back well i also wanted to bring I, up I like that him. he's like been him. in the finals two straight years and he's been on and even he's on phoenix right now and he's done incredibly well there and he did very well at miami the miami heat who made it to the finals and beat your beat our celtics your celtics last year in the uh, conference final and all you you and tom's you guys go on and on about him uh but he also was on uh the utah jazz the year before uh and they were a pretty good team and they made it fairly far i don't know if they made it to the western conference finals i think they made it to the like pretty far in the you know semi uh conference finals but yeah you need guys like that jake crowder was a great player here because he was a great role player who could give him some score and give you some defense. I think he knows his role here. Like that. Yes, 100%. And he, he, he had no bones about it. And people, I'm all about it. I'm all about yeah. it. I don't think... So why I'm, why I'm we're on this about, like 2015-16 yeah. kind of revert the clock back, why don't we not give Paul Pierce a call and Kevin Garnett and then Ray Allen, and then we have everybody together, and then we should be good. As far as together the coach <laughs> or on the... I know you're just... Back, yeah. Yeah. Why, why don't uh, we yeah. go out and get Kelly Olenek back? Why, I, why not? I just why, want Truman bring, Douglas. Bring the whole That's party all. back, you know? Uh, I am all for, I just want to I Dino Raja. for Jay, Jay Crowder with, with coming back. No, but I honestly, I'm not talking necessarily about even bringing him back. I'm just talking about you had a reason why you made, you were so successful. You had players like him. You had uh, uh, Morris. You had, uh, I was going to say Bam Morris, but no, you had one of the Morris Marcus twins. Morris, yeah. uh, Marcus Morris, yep. Yeah. And uh, you have these people who are a part of these teams who he won. I think he won a championship last year with the Lakers and he was with the Clippers this year, or it could have been his brother. They're twins. I can't tell them apart sometimes, but uh, yeah, they, you have these role players that are very essential and you, you said it bet you, the key word is accepted the role. And that's when you need more people to come on those teams and accept the role and need someone to lay that hammer down and be like, this is how we're going to do things. Yeah. And hopefully Ume uh, Adoka, he doesn't. And I, I think he he kind of in his opening press conference, he kind of slammed Brad a little about saying like, yeah, they were kind of 27th in the league for assists. I love that. It was great. I really don't think Brad Stevens is here long. I really don't. We'll see. We'll see what moves he makes and how he drafts. I mean, and if you know it doesn't go well, then we I move think along. we get him back to college. The more the more I possibly. More I, yeah. There's a big chance, big chance it could. We could even trade them to another team. The here is the contract. I think they're waiting for that oh, college or whatever it is to agree upon the contract that the Celtics have to kind of transition that over to them. Yeah. So the Celtics don't have to deal with it anymore, basically. So, yeah, and also they, they could get something out of him. They could get like you know picks or players if they trade him to another team. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yes, definitely a wait and see approach with the whole matter there. Um. Who do you like in the finals? Who do you have in the finals here? Oh. Who is your team? Are you a Bucker or a Sun? I like them both. I mean, probably Phoenix, if I would put money on it, Phoenix might be the one to put your money on. Yeah. Uh, but who knows if Chris Middleton keeps it up and if Drew Holiday and the rest of uh, – and Lopez and all of them, if they just keep rebounding, 
crashing the boards, they might they might pull and pass. And if Giannis comes back, well, that's the thing that I keep saying to myself. Like if they win and they don't win without Giannis, oh, oh, that doesn't look so good, huh? Well, I, I don't know if they can get away with it here. On the part for just being able to step up and do it without their big guy. Yeah, and also but Trey I Young was, honest, was oh, injured. I, I I would not feel good about that. No, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a good look per se. But I also you know qualify all that with. You know the the Hawks are actually Hawks are a pretty good team, uh, and they they turned into a really good team, but you know what Trey Young was injured those yeah. last couple of games, and he like you could see it. He, he didn't his his stat line wasn't that good, but he also wasn't around. He wasn't he, watching the game itself. You saw he couldn't do half the stuff he wanted to do, and yeah. that made a big difference. And when you have that was like there that's a big star. They have some good role players, and you know Capella's great. Um, uh, Brogdo, uh, Bogdovich is great. Her letters is pretty good, but the Celtics players are watching this in management. They should see how role players are affected. Yeah, I mean, you to, if you're a championship team, you have to have the role players to get it done. And I think you'll have like Naismith will probably have a bigger role because he's kind of a scrappy guy who can shoot, and he will run the floor. You need people who, who like I said, well, before, give a crap. I'm going here and actually tell you this. I think that with free agency and with all this change coming, all these people like Naismith and Robert Williams and all of the benchy kind of guys, I think we're going to see something different here with this team. I think we are. I think that their, their time's up. I think it's time that some veterans... Robert Williams or Naismith? I, I think both, truthfully. Well, Naismith, this was his first year. What do you mean? His I know. I know being a first year, but I think he's guilty. He, no, 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 you're right. He's, he's riding the curtails of this thing for five plus years or something, or since he was an infant. So we'll see what we can do. No, I listen, Naismith, they put him in at the end, maybe because they didn't think he was ready or he was injured. But I think, uh, I think he'll be more. The world, uh, semi Ojales. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think semi was, I think semi was a a bad guy. With with, with them, you know, I know that they've overvalued them in some capacity. We got some production from them on defense and a little bit, but I think they're going into different, I think they're going to be going into different, Kind of mentality for this upcoming season. Which they might go on a I'm different excited direction. About. I don't know about you, but when they want to put, pardon my language, but they want to put the puke squad in, that's why you lose. Yeah. Oh, no, of course. If you don't have the personnel, you can't do it. But I don't think Robin Williams and Nace put their necessarily on that chopping block. I'll give you a semi and I'll yeah. give you uh, any, I mean, even Pritchard, who played decently, he played pretty well. I mean, you can yeah. see that. I, I think Nace Smith has kind of an upside and he's a scrapper. And I mean that in a positive way where you don't have a lot of those who run the floor he runs the floor he plays defense and he can he can be in the corner and shoot I mean I can see even if you're like oh we got to get rid of Grant Williams but I don't know I like Grant Williams he's a good role player Tristan Thompson played played pretty good in the playoffs but you know what get him out of there I don't want to it's a bad contract and Tristan Thompson isn't a winner in my eyes just isn't well I mean he's won one yeah Thanks to LeBron and Kyrie, I think when he was together with them, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not. Listen, you need you need the star players, and you need all these other guys around you. That's how you win. You don't just win with star players. You can't. Yeah. Look at Brooklyn. Last thing I want to mention here, it's unrelated here to any other thing, but this past weekend, I'm not sure if you guys were filled in with the lockdown that Reading and Wakefield and Stoneham and all those had. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Moots, the Moots, the Moors. The Moors, the Moors. Well, the Moors, the Moors I, were yeah. a group. All right, never mind. Whatever. No. The Mooks. The I was lesson. calling it the Mooks. What a bunch of Mooks. What a bunch of Mooks. I thought Mookie escaped back here. Um, the reason I want to bring them up is because I was away. So I, w- I woke up to a bunch of people, you know, what the heck's going on? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. Like, what's, and they're like, oh, the Mooks are coming to get you. So I looked at the video. And I saw it. And when I looked at it, I did a two and two. The leader of the pack looks like Kyrie Irving. I don't know if you guys saw the video of the whole thing, but all I could think of I is like, what, what a Kyrie thing to do. What a Kyrie. It's like. So Kyrie, Kyrie has anything. a militia, as we yeah. all know. Yeah. Um, and he's claimed to be a nationalist. But what, so, but what, a, what a crazy turn of events that whole thing. Oh, it's nuts. And those people were nuts. Yeah. I don't know what they 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 didn't like, know they totally random conflicting just lucky. I just want to say how thankful we should be for all of our respected towns, you know, police departments for taking care of the situation, everything there. But 
reason I bring it up is because it was looked like Kyrie lost a. I honestly thought that it was Kyrie dressed in some sort of thing, pulling a joke on everybody. You were hoping. Hey, I'm were back hoping. here. I'm taking all my talents to Maine and doing my thing now, or whatever the hell he. But that's what it looked like to me. That's why I wanted to bring it up. But kudos to our lovely police departments for taking care of the job and doing it and keeping everybody safe and getting rid of the uh, the mooks. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to call them mooks. I'm just saying it as a joke. So. What? The mook. I, the whole <laughs> no, thing I don't care. People were talking about the mook thing. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else anybody wants to mention before we wrap up today's program? Yeah, uh, NBA finals are happening this week. Uh, oh, that it's sucks. A Keep going. Go Keep Red chugging Red. along. Keep chugging along. All right, we will see you again next time for another episode of Face the Facts. Tally-o.